We've assembled here today uh, to have this press conference um, for what I consider a very serious issue, and not only me, but many of uh, my colleagues within the legislature, uh, many of who are, whom are here with us today, and I'd like to acknowledge uh, that being uh, Senator Eric Coleman, who is the uh, Senate Chairman of the Judiciary Committee, um, Representative Hilda Santiago, uh, Representative Pat Billy Miller, Representative Juan Candelario, and Representative Angel Arce, as well as many other members of the legislature, about a serious issue. One of the members consider really a civil rights violation is the fact that within this country, and certainly within this state, we educate by zip code. To the extent that we've now criminalized individuals who register their children in the wrong school. It is something that happens across the state pretty much regularly. However, selectively, selectively, some parents have been picked out and chosen to suffer a consequence or being arrested for first degree larceny, a penalty punishable by 20 years, up to 20 years of imprisonment. So today, we want to put some more faces to this story and allow you to hear um, from a, a grandmother who was arrested. I want you to hear from some attorneys uh, who, who, have, who have represented individuals who have been arrested for uh, first degree larceny for trying to get their child a fair and equitable education. It is our hope that this year we will decriminalize school residency violations. Uh, and now I'd like to give you the opportunity to, to hear a real life story uh, of a grandmother who was not given those administrative opportunities, those administrative remedies that uh, Senator Coleman just alluded to, the, that are found in Section 10-186 of our Connecticut General Statutes. The remedies at which 99% of the time are, are utilized and are more appropriate uh, for this type of situation. I introduce you Ms. Grandmother from Stratford, Mrs. Marie Menard, who will come and tell her story. Well, this all started when my daughter was 15 and had gotten pregnant. So my grandson was living in, in my home all that time. Um, when my daughter got arrested for, um, excuse me, I'm just really nervous. <laughs> um, for, um, actually, the school didn't give us a chance to explain any of this to them. Um, didn't have a hearing of any sort from the school, so um, they automatically went right to having us arrested. So Anna was arrested out on the street, handcuffed, put into a car, and brought to jail. Couldn't call her child who she was going to pick up from daycare. And then she called me up and told me that it would be best for me to go in and get in turn myself in, which I did to Stratford. Um, it was very humiliating. I was, I was fingerprinted, uh, had a mug shot, and so on, and had to just be, it was just really terrible. It was a very bad experience, very bad. But um, uh, the fight for this shouldn't be a felony. I mean, it, when I was gonna fight this, uh, the worst part of it was, when I did get this lawyer, it cost a lot of money to get that, and then on top of all that, if I had lost, I would have gotten 20 years for sending my grandson to school. It just didn't make any sense to me. So I hope that they could do something with this because it really is a terrible thing for a grandmother to go through. I just want what's best for my grandsons. It was a terrible thing to have happen. I, I don't know what else to say. <laughs> No, you've, you've, done a, you've done a great job. I think uh, your, your story helps to uh, make this very clear to people, uh, to make it clear. She is a Stratford homeowner. It was her own town that, that ended up uh, char charging her for having her own grandchildren, who did live in her home with her, um, go to the schools. And that's the problem. The courts are not equipped to handle this issue. School districts are. School districts have the proper means to determine whether the uh, family is homeless. They have the proper means to determine with private investigators um, uh, wh whether this child meets 
the statutory requirements to be considered a resident of that city. So having you now uh, a, a great leader within the, within the state of Connecticut, uh, certainly for parents and rallying parents around issues that are important to educating all children. She's the founder of the Connecticut Parents Union, Gwen Samuels. Yeah, thank you so much. Good morning, everyone. First and foremost, I am a parent. And before I came here today, I had to make sure that my children were ready for school. I had to make sure their clothes was out. I had to make sure that they ate. So there was a role that I had to play in my child's life before I even came up here. And so it puts me in a tough position as a parent when there are research upon research says that parents are needed to ensure the well-being of their children, that they're needed uh, to be engaged in the educational system to ensure better outcomes. But before I go into that, I forgot to tell you, I am Gwen Samuel, I am a parent, I am also in the founder of the Connecticut Parents Union. And I stand behind Marie Menard today because here was a grandma, she, she uh, was nervous today, but understand this, her daughter was a teenage mother. The oldest child was 15 years old when she had her first child. Grandma did what grandma should have done, support her daughter as a young mother. And then to further that, she had to get her young mother to graduate high school. So grandma knew the importance of education, and in spite of what she was going through, she got her daughter to graduate high school. Mommy made sure you are not going to have these kids bouncing all over the place. We're gonna, you're going to stay here, we're going to work this thing out, and we're going to raise these children together until you become self-sufficient and able to meet the needs of the children. So clearly the Menard House put the needs of the children first. Just like I put the needs of my children first, Tanya McDowell put the, her son's child first, Kelly williams Bolar in Akron, Ohio put her daughter's children first, H Hamlet Garcia in Philadelphia, he put his six-year-old daughter first. And the only thing we were guilty of was loving our children and doing what was best. And what the laws currently say is, that's not good enough. If you don't do it our way, if you don't put our state interest first before the children, we will arrest you and convict you. So here are the challenges with the law, because all we want was best for kids. Marie Menard is a taxpayer. She owned her home since 1983. So why wasn't she able to have the ability to do what was best for her child? Instead, she was charged as a felon. Tanya McDowell, yes, she had some issues. But one thing she did right, and we don't recognize that and we don't acknowledge that she had a black male in the state of Connecticut which has a better chance of going to prison than the college. She took it upon herself and put her child in a working, high-performing kindergarten class. And how did we acknowledge that great person of being a good mother in that aspect? We arrested her for it. And then when you look at this, this is happening across the state. We currently have a, a discrimination complaint between, with the U.S. Department of Education. We signed on with Senator Romero out of California, other parent groups across the country, because parents are concerned. Because all we want are good schools for our children. And Connecticut should want the same. We're in a fiscal crisis. We can't afford, we don't even have a qualified workforce to draw from. So it shouldn't matter whether I'm black, Hispanic, or white. Do you know if we give them a good education, we create future taxpayers. Future taxpayers have jobs in Connecticut, they stay in Connecticut, and then we have revenue into Connecticut. And what does that do? It stabilizes our economy. And then we don't have to go after cutting benefits for our most vulnerable. So don't penalize me for doing what is best for my child as a parent, and then if I don't do it, you say, the schools are failing because those terrible parents are just not engaged in their children's life. Don't they understand the importance of early childhood education? Tanya McDowell did. She put her baby in a good kindergarten class. Hamlet Garcia in Philadelphia did. He put his six-year-old in a good kindergarten class. Kelly williams Bellar wanted a safe school. Have you ever toured some of our lowest performing schools in the state of Connecticut? You wouldn't put be honest, you, you wouldn't go there. But yet we send our children there every day. So give a chance to the education reform efforts to work. In 2010, we have school governance councils. Parents are working with teachers and community leaders. We're trying to improve the school. You're investing dollars through the commissioner's network. So let's improve the schools. But you can't arrest me because you don't have it together. You can't arrest me because you are not fiscally being smart in the spending in how we're um, in, um, 
funding Connecticut schools. You can't penalize me because you're still working out teacher evaluations. You can't penalize me because you don't have accountability system on how you even spend the money into the schools. So we're asking you that, and I applaud Mr. Oh, I was so happy when I got the call from Representative Bruce Morris. I said, Lord, he's hearing us. I was so happy. I said, keep hope alive. And then I heard Senator Coleman. I'm like, yes, they're hearing it. Because parents are stepping up to the game. And there's a fiscal impact to this. If you let us be parents, if you support us, then our children are in your child welfare systems. And then the state doesn't have to take on being the parent of children. But what happens with this law is if you arrest us and take us from our children, you now put our children in the very system that you're, we're trying to keep our children out. You can't have it both ways. So I ask you to work with parents across Connecticut, work with the community advocates, work with the civil rights attorneys like uh, Attorney Josephine Miller and, and um, the attorney for Tanya McDowell and our Judiciary Committee. We are better than this as a state. Yes, we're facing tough times, but we are the wealthiest state in the nation with the worst achievement gap, and that is unacceptable. Don't blame me as a parent for that. When I, and as I close out, when I was at the Newtown School Security Public Hearing, school security hearings in January, the number one thing lawmakers stated was we need common sense approaches. This is so common sense, that doesn't make any sense. It costs you more money to prosecute me, right, from the police officers, law enforcement. I need them to be first responders, being able to handle fires and being able to catch the criminals who are robbing some of these banks, to be able to do some of the things to keep our Connecticut state safe. But what we're using them for is arresting Marie Menard, who pays her taxes, never been in trouble with the law, has a great husband, great grandchildren, even the daughter that dropped out of high school, went back to high school, and she works. Having workers work into the system works for us, but you're willing to not spend the resources effectively. That is an irresponsible approach. So again, I thank the lawmakers for addressing this issue. I'm asking lawmakers to look at the turnaround efforts Look at how we're improving the schools. Put our sights there to make sure that these education reform efforts are working effectively. And then you don't have to worry about parents leaving their neighborhood because in Waterbury, Connecticut, the parents just want a good school. And, and the way these turnaround efforts are currently going without the oversight, parents are talking about leaving the community. That's when this law kicks into place. So help us in the suburban communities and the communities across the state, help us improve our schools across the state of Connecticut so that we can be proud to stay in our neighborhoods. We, if we want to stay, our, you know, have our kids there, we should be able to do so. But if the school is not meeting our needs, do not ask me as a parent to put my kids in harm's way. Do not ask me to give my children a poor education when across the neighborhood street they have a better education. Don't ask me that because I will use the McDonald's address to get a good education for my child. And you can quote me on that one. So I thank you very much and have a good day. And if there's any questions, thank you. Thank you.